Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Angelica Martinez. I'm the case manager at the UIC Assistive Technology Unit. And accompanying me throughout this presentation is also Marcus William, our architect and OTA. This is a three-part presentation in which we will provide you with an overview of our referral process and our services. In the first part of this presentation, we are going to discuss uh, basics about the UIC ATU clinic or three phases, the referral process and the evaluation documentation you will be receiving from our clinicians. Please go over this acronym table if you have any questions throughout this presentation. Before we start, let's go over two key definitions. So assistive technology is typically defined as any type of item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether it's acquired commercially or is customized. And this type of equipment is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of people with disabilities. There's also durable medical equipment, also known as DME. And durable medical equipment is typically known as the type of equipment that can withstand, withstand repeated use, serve a medical purpose, can be used in and out of the home, and has an expected lifetime of at least three years. Just a little overview about the USC Assistive Technology Unit. Our clinic typically specializes itself in 11 different areas of assistive technology, and the most commonly requested services are activity, activities of daily living, instrumental activities of daily living, mobility, environmental modifications, and in some occasions we do get referrals for augmentative and alternative communication and adaptive equipment. We also have an interdisciplinary team composed of occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech language pathologists, rehabilitation engineers, and architects. And our team works together in a different combination based on assistive technology areas uh, in order for the class member to improve, maintain, or increase their quality of life. I also want to highlight that although we do have occupational, physical, and speech language pathologists, we do not provide your typical uh, therapy services. Our services are mostly geared towards the assistive devices or strategies that are therapies recommend and later on implement and train the class members to work with this. Fun fact, since 1991, we actually have a mobile program that allows us to provide community-based services uh, in the community. And this means that our clinicians can go to the nursing facilities, MRFs, or group homes, or the class members resident in order to provide services directly. So we want to let you know that the UIC Assistive Technology Unit does not see every Colbert or Williams member. We only see members based on when the prime sees the needs for our services. Typically, uh, prime may, will, might make referrals to us if the class member could uh, need some assistance with basic activities of daily living or instrumental activities of daily living. Also, when the class member is a mobility aid user, either a wheelchair user or rollator user. And we typically highlight these two types of equipment because we may want to get involved. We may need to take the dimensions of this type of mobility aid in order to find out what type of accessibility requirements uh, the class member can benefit from once they transition and also for potential environmental modifications. Another way you can make a referral to us is if for some reason the class member experiences difficulties communicating verbally or other people cannot understand the class member. We actually have speech language pathologists that can help out with this by providing the class member with strategies or devices uh, to serve as facilitators for this communication. And the last one is if 
the class member could benefit from the use of non-standard DME. You have your basic DME, which is typically funded under the class member's health insurance, but you also have your non-standard DME, which the assistive technology unit can help uh, procure and implement and train the class member in this type of non-standard DME. So we have three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one typically occurs in the nursing facilities, MRF or group home, and here one of our physical or, or occupational therapies assess the member for mobility and ADL needs and accessibility requirements prior to transitioning to the community. Then we have phase two, which occurs in the potential or current apartment, and here one of our architects or rehabilitation engineers will provide accessibility modifications recommendations. Lastly, we have phase three, which always occurs in the community. And here, one of our occupational therapists will, have, will go to the home of the member and just have a conversation to see what type of potential IADL strategies and equipment the class member could benefit from in order to help with independence and safety. We want to highlight that for cold birth members, the UIC Assistive Technology Unit manages $5,000 across all three phases. And for Williams members, right now the Assistive Technology Unit is managing $1,000 across all three phases per class member for both. And here, uh, this $5,000 for each class member for Colbert or the $1,000 for each class member for Williams can be used uh, for their environmental modification or for any other non-standard DME or loss cost equipment. This is a list that contains the most updated contact information for the UIC assistive technology staff by faces. And this list also includes the contact information of the individuals you need to use uh, to communicate in order to, uh, when making that initial referral. For example, for phase one, the evaluation in the nursing home, uh, the initial contact in order to make that referral, it's gonna be myself, Angelica Martinez, and then you can CC the director of our unit, Mr. Glenn Hetman. Uh, this list, you are also going to find the contact information of each of our clinicians pair by the face they are involved with. And you can use the clinician contact information if you want to follow up on the services that are provided. In this slide, uh, you can see you will find the contact information of the clinicians uh, that are mainly in charge of wheel mobility and augmentative and alternative communication. You will also find uh, the primary contacts if you have general, uh, general questions, that will be myself, Angelica Martinez, and CC, the director, Glenn Hepman, and also our fax number. In a nutshell, if you need uh, to initiate a referral, the easiest way to do it is email us. You can also you can also fax the referral. However, if you want a more straightforward way to do it, you can email us. If you have any questions on how to initiate the referral, you can feel free to refer to this table. Uh, the for phase one that will be in the nursing facilities MRF or a group home. Sometimes uh, the primary contact is going to be myself and then you can see the director of our unit. For phase two, the environmental modification assessment, the primary contact will be Marcus Williams, and then feel free to CC Chris Ducky, our other architect, and then myself and Glenn Hedman. And in order to initiate phase three services, feel free to contact myself and CC Glenn Hedman. Okay, so let's talk about what type of documentation you need to provide us 
the assistive technology unit in order to initiate the referral. This is very, very important to initiate a referral for phase one, phase two, or phase three, you're gonna need to provide us with two core documents. The first core document is the UIC Assistive Technology Unit Intake Form. And the second core document is the Assessment Form, which is formerly known as the Resident Review Form. There's also additional documentation that will be required if you want to initiate a referral for phase two and phase three. And very, very important, we cannot process any referral if we have an incomplete packet. We need to have all of the required documentation in order to process this referral. This is an example of the UIC's assistive uh, technology units intake form has uh, contains very basic information that you need to provide us with including the client information the type of assistive technology evaluation requested and the referral source and in this referral source uh, we need you to provide us with the contact information of the case coordinator that is working directly with uh, the client uh, please don't include the name of the supervisor or the manager. Uh, we need the name of the person that is working directly with the client. In case we have any questions, we can just get right at the source, uh, get the question answered, and move forward uh, with the process. Perfect. In order to initiate a phase, uh, phase two services, you need to provide us with additional documentation. And this document is called the Request for Phase Two Services Form. And although ideal, the class member does not need to have a Phase One in order to obtain Phase Two services. Here you can find an example of the Request for Phase Two Services Form, which uh, you will need to provide us with information such as uh, the address, where is the apartment located, a client name, the housing locator information, the care coordinator's information, and the landlord's uh, contact information as well. Moving forward to phase three, in order to initiate phase three services, you are gonna have to provide us with the request for phase three services form. And again, although it will be ideal, the member does not need to get a phase one or does not need phase two services in order to obtain phase three services. Uh, this is the one pager for the request for phase three services form and we are going to request uh, simple information such as the client's name, the move date, client's address, client contact number, and so forth. So, we, the assistive technology unit, are going to do our best to keep up with the members that are transitioning by obtaining information uh, with potentials uh, scheduled prime calls. However, sometimes it's very challenging uh, to keep up with the members that are moving. So this is why we need your help. So whenever you, uh, Prime, knows and have identified a move date for your client, please provide us with the request for phase three services form. And this request for phase three services form, it's gonna let us know that the member is ready to transition and we can place this member in our list and schedule an appointment once the member is uh, transitioned to the community with one of our occupational therapists. So if you could please provide us with the request for phase three services form, once you know a, a move date, that will be great. And if the class member already moved, please also provide us with a request for phase three services uh, form so we would know to enlist this client in our list and schedule an appointment. This table is just a summary of the required documentation. So for all phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three, we're gonna need two core documents, which are the assistive technology unit intake form 
and the assessment form that was previously known as the resident review form. If you find that your client, the, the class member, can benefit from environmental modification assessment, please uh, submit to us the request for phase two services form. If the client can benefit from phase three services, please initiate the uh, referral using the request for phase three services form. But please remember that for all phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three, we do require those two core documents. So what documentation will you, the prime, receive from our clinicians once they completed an evaluation? After every phase one assessment, our clinicians will provide you with two reports, the mobility and ADL reports and the accessibility requirements report. And the mobility and ADL report will provide you with information uh, such as a summary of the client specific ADL needs. And based on our clinician's recommendations, this report will include a table. This table is located in the last page of the report. The entire report is important, but we just want to highlight this table because this table contains specific information as to the basic DME the prime is responsible for obtaining. This is in the left column. And the equipment, the assistive technology unit is responsible for obtaining. And this is gonna be in the right column. If for some reason you have any questions about the recommended basic DME equipment that our clinicians listed in the left table for you, feel free to call them or or email them and have a conversations uh, with our clinicians to know more and get a little bit more information about this type of equipment and why was it recommended if you have any questions. Our clinicians are more than available to help you out. Then for the second report, we have the accessibility requirements report. And this report uh, will provide you with specific information for the housing locating purposes about what accessibility features the apartment should have. Should the apartment have an elevator, stairs? Should the apartment have carpet or hardwood? Things like this and this type of items are going to be located in this accessibility requirements report. If for some reason uh, your prime agency does not do their own housing locating and you have a subcontractor, please Ha, uh, please provide the subcontractor with this report uh, and, and recommendations from our clinicians in order for the housing locating agency and your subcontractor to have this on hand when locating that apartment. Once our clinicians uh, finish the evaluation for, for phase two, you're going to receive a report and this report includes the scope of work and the photo documentation, and it's gonna provide you with a summary of our clinician's recommendations regarding the environmental modifications, recommendations that will be done in the apartment and who will be performing the work. If for some reason the environmental modification turns out to be a complex environmental modification, you will also receive a scale drawing you can see in the far right of this slide. If the environmental modification is basic, such as the, the addition, uh, installation of a grab bar, you're not gonna receive the scale drawing. But if it turns out to be an entire bathroom modification or a ramp, vertical platform lift, you will be receiving the scope of work, the photo documentation, which is one report, and also the scale drawing. Lastly, for phase three, you will be receiving an IADL evaluation report. And this report will provide you with information about the member specific IADL needs and the equipment we, the assistive technology unit, can provide. Usually the equipment involved in the phase three is of low cost. So almost always 
we are going to be obtaining this type of equipment. You will get this report. And most likely, you don't have to act on it however, because uh, the equipment is of low cost. However, if for some reason our clinicians do identify some type of basic DME in this assessment, they will be contacting you uh, directly to let you know to see how it can be purchased and funded from your side using the member's health insurance. So in part two, we're going to be discussing differences between ADLs and IADLs, uh, the differences between basic DME and non-standard DME, and just an introduction and a very short overview of our phase one, phase two, and phase three. So let's talk briefly about ADLs and IADLs and why we uh, do our phase ones ADLs uh, versus our phase threes IADLs. So uh, typically our clinicians assess for basic ADLs during uh, phase one and these activities include eating, bathing, toileting, getting dressed, getting around the house and getting in and out of bed and these activities are very important and any type of equipment that is recommended based on these activities very important for the member's safety and it will be best to have this type of equipment ready to go once uh, the member uh, is about to transition. And then we have our phase threes, which involve uh, IADL activities. And uh, we leave the phase three and IADL activities because these are activities performed mainly in the community. Uh, this involves grocery shopping, medicine, using the phone, medication management, uh, money management, meal preparation, laundry, and so forth. Then we have uh, the differences between durable medical equipment. We have the basic DME that it's mainly funded and covered uh, using the member's health insurance. And then we have the non-standard DME, which is equipment that typically health insurance does not fund or cover and the assistive technology uses, use, uh, unit, sorry, uses the class member's uh, money, either the $5,000 for the Colbert class member or the $1,000 for the Williams class member in order to procure this type of equipment. Some examples of basic DME, we have uh, your manual wheelchair is considered to be basic DME. We have a walker with or without wheels, also basic DME. A transfer top bench is considered basic DME. For ADLs, a shower chair. We also have a hospital bed and a floor-based manual transfer lift. All equipment that could potentially be procured using the class members health insurance. And this is a non-standard DME. Again, uh, the UIC assistive technology unit can aid to acquire this non-standard uh, DME, typically not funded using uh, the health insurance. But the first uh, picture in the left, it's a bathing transfer system. This is a complex equipment. Uh, this is a specific sliding rolling shower chair commode and can be used while the top is still in place. We have procured this for several of our class members. Picture on the right is a toilet seat lift. More examples of non-standard DME, we have a lift chair, which we uh, have used uh, the class member uh, funding that we do manage in order to procure this type of equipment. And then we have picture on the right, your floor-based power transfer lift, comparison to your floor-based manual transfer lift, which can potentially be funded using the class member's health insurance, and now non-standard DME, floor-based power transfer lift. More examples uh, of non-standard DME, your adaptive equipment. We have on the left an adaptive cutting board, which is commercially available. And then picture on the right, we have a cup holder. And there's also trays for wheelchair or walkers that are also commercially available. 
we uh, want to make a note that uh, the assistive technology unit has a 3D printer. And if for some reason uh, the commercially available, for example, cup holder does not fit the needs for the class member, and we cannot find a commercially available cup holder that might fit their need, then there is there is the possibility of us using a 3D printer in order to customize a cup holder for this class member. Just an example. Now for a very quick overview of our phases. For phase one, the main purpose of phase one is to gather enough information about the client specific basic ADL needs in order to inform the apartment selection and the procurement and the plan for procurement of mobility aids, uh, transfer equipment, and the basic ADL equipment they might need before uh, transitioning to this apartment. So during our phase two evaluation to identify home modifications, we determine the specifics and the amount of work required for the modification. All ATU and viral modifications can be classified as either basic or complex. Basic modifications are always within the allotted $5,000 ATU budget, involve a modest amount of work, and generally only require a fairly simple specification scope document. Complex modifications are usually over the ATU budget, involve more extensive work, and require an expanded specification scope document, which often includes a detailed architectural drawing. They also have a longer completion time. Here are some examples of the architectural drawings that are included in the scope document sent to contractors for complex phase two modifications. This is just a quick snapshot of some of the work required for a scope document, and more examples will be provided in a separate expanded phase two presentation that goes into more detail about the actual phase two evaluation, the construction process, and funding options for class members. On our next slide, we talk about phase three services. So during phase three, not only are our ATU clinicians following up on the equipment that might have been recommended in phase one during the assessment, but they are also providing an assessment for potential IADL strategies or equipment that the class member might need. As you know, the needs from the, uh, for the class member may have changed from phase one to phase three they may or may not benefit from the recommendations made during, made during that phase one assessment because the environment in the nursing facility or the SMURF or the group home is very different from the environment right now in the community. So phase three is very important because our clinicians can review the recommendations provided during phase one and also provide the class member with other type of strategies that fit their current needs and environment. In part three, we're gonna discuss a little bit more about a seating and wheel mobility and AAC components. So typically for our seating and wheel mobility components, we encourage uh, the prime agency to work with the PTs, OTs, nurses uh, working at the nursing facility or the SMURF because they can recommend and request uh, wheelchairs or mobility equipment using the class member's health insurance. We also want to remind you that manual and power wheelchairs can be funded using the class member's health insurance. And very important piece of information, insurance only funds one piece of mobility equipment every five years. This is typically what uh, Medicaid and Medicaid managed care and Medicare insurance do. They typically fund only one piece of mobility equipment every five years. Also, for power wheelchair assessments, it's preferable for this type of assessment to happen in the community. So typically, uh, the assistive technology unit can provide an assessment when the class member does not qualify for a wheelchair using their health insurance. 
when the class member needs a customized wheelchair, when a power wheelchair is needed in the community, and very, very important, we can only provide an assessment when the prime agency provides us with a primary care physician's prescription or order for therapy evaluation for mobility device. This is exactly what the primary care physician needs to write in their order. Therapy evaluation for mobility device. Without this order, we cannot perform any assessment since we are going to procure this equipment uh, power wheelchair, most likely using the client's health insurance. The health insurance requires a prescription order from the primary care physician in order to approve this equipment. These are examples of seating and wheel mobility equipment. The picture in the left is a custom seating and this is a customized seating mold that it's customized to the client's unique seating and positioning needs and the picture in the right is a powered wheelchair now in our last section we have our augmentative and alternative communication services better known as aac and as i discussed before, this type of services can be provided to clients that have difficulties communicating verbally, verbally or other people can understand what the client is trying to communicate. Our speech language pathologists don't provide your traditional speech therapy services. However, they can work with the class member to find out their goals and their needs and find potential strategies to aid with the communication. In a separate model, our speech language pathologists will be talking about the materials they developed for the primes, more specifically a communication book for the prime uh, to use this during their outreach and assessment. If you have any questions about this communication book, uh, this future model will be providing you with this information. However, you can also contact our speech language pathologists directly uh, for more information. Very important as well, we also have Spanish strategies available because one of our speech language pathologies is actually a bilingual speech language pathologies, English and Spanish. In these slides, we just wanted to provide you with some examples of the equipment the class member can benefit from and our speech language pathologies can recommend. Far left, the picture is a simple communication book known typically as low tech and it's just uh, pictures and paper and our last two devices are mainly known as electronic communication devices the picture in the middle is recorded speech so um, someone either the clinician or the class member a family member friend or care coordinator will be able to record a uh, nine messages or however many messages their recorded speech would allow them to and they will press the picture and then the picture will output the recorded message and then the picture on the right is a little bit more higher tech and it's called synthesized text to speech which uh, is when the member can have a tablet on an iPad and this tablet or iPad has a software and program that is programmed in order to provide any type of information or messages that the class member might want to communicate and a synthesized text to speech voice will output this message for the class member. Now after providing all this general overview of ATU forms and processes, we'd like to hear more about your agency and some of its procedures. So a few questions for you. How does your agency perform outreach to educate the community about Colbert and Williams program services? Who conducts client assessments for your team? Who performs housing location services for your clients? How do you acquire DME, standard DME, um, and furniture for your clients for transition 
How do you handle follow-up visits with your clients? How frequently does it happen? Does it happen in person? Does it happen in person? Details like that. And finally, is there a directory of all your agency's members directly involved with the Colbert and Williams programs? Thank you so much for joining us in this overview of the APU intake documentation and services. We hope this presentation was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to check out our question and answers document. And you can also email me. My contact information is located in the APU uh, contacts by face form. That will be Angelica Martinez, angelmar at uic.edu. Again, thank you so much.